G'day and welcome to rebuilding the rear calipers for our XC Falcon. Now these calipers I think are used on, I know they're on XDs. Um, XB ones I think are different. Uh, some XEs I believe, XS are different, I know that as well. But we've got lots of bits here. Some of them I haven't got in this bench space because there's not much shooting room. Here's one that's already redone. Um, just a standard rear disc cast iron caliper. Now, when you buy these, you can buy them second hand at a reasonable price, but if you buy them reconditioned, some sellers are asking around $650, $700 for a pair. Um, not sure if they're changeover, but that's outlandish. You'll also find uh, they're rebuilt. They'll be rebuilt by brake joints, so they'll be good, but quite often they're just rattle can silver. And I wanted this bare cast iron look by, I soaked these in uh, vinegar for a week and cleaned them all up. Neutralized with bicarb of soda, cleaned them all up, uh, washed them out, and coated them in a clear because I wanted that natural cast iron look uh, for our reconditioned component. So it's a restored car, so it's a car undergoing restoration, so I didn't want anything looking rattle canned. Uh, right, so what we've got to do is assemble all these parts for this one. There's only a few bits here, the rest are in bags just over yonder. Now before we start, there's a few things we need to look at. This is the right rear caliper. A couple of things to take note of. The nipples at the top for bleeding. The handbrake lever faces the bottom. The pins, slider pins, are flush on the handbrake side and protrude on this side here. The square clip goes toward the top. So just a couple of things. Now, there's a proper routine for putting these together for the handbrake. That spring doesn't look great, but it is in the right spot. So I think we'll put this to the side and we'll begin with this guy. So I'm just going to get some newspaper and we'll make a start. Right, the piston, this is a brand new one. Um, good idea to keep your old one before you chuck in, before you throw it away, um, just to measure the diameter and also the height of it. Now this is identical to the one that came out. Um, I can't show you that because I've already chucked it, but um, basically it's rust and... Um, water damage all the way around. Don't forget brakes, brake fluid is hygroscopic so it does attract moisture and hold it within. So I'm going to clean this with proper brake cleaner, not the two dollar shop stuff and we're just going to go through clean it all the inside with a clean rag and make sure we get rid of that oily residue. Now the outside I'm not so worried about because I am going to have to um, clean it you know, after I've been handling it when I'm ready to install it. But for now, that's kind of not a big deal. But we want to get the inside of it clean. They do come with an anti-rust sort of agent on them, like an oily residue, which probably, I would hazard a guess, doesn't agree with brake fluid. Um, but we do need that to be nice and clean inside. And there's a few things we need to put together on our piston. Right, so we've got that nice and clean. There's a few parts that go inside before we can assess any, well, before we can put anything together, we need to make sure of a few things. And the first is we have to have some tea. A few parts. This bloke here goes with a long side facing out. And it sits in there like that. Now there's a bearing that sits in there that rolls. I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff. It's PBR rubber grease. Now, I'm using, I don't know if PBR make this caliper, but they make pretty much every other caliper on Ford. So I'm just going to put a little bit for that race to sit on. This is all lubricated by the brake fluid when it's all bled up. That sits in there, and I've got to get it to sit right in that rebate. So, where am I then? Then we've got a bearing that sits over there, and we've got this washer as well, sectioned washer. This is a bellable washer so it's got a natural cup type uh, appearance to it and the thrust side faces in and then we finish the gig with, uh, hang on I need the right pliers, with a circlip and we grab this bloke and we stick him in there and then we have to make sure it's in properly by pressing it down into its groove and then double and triple checking that it's right because once this is in, kids are playing next door, can you hear that? There it goes. Once this is in, 
you can't get to it again unless you pull the whole caliper apart. So that's how it goes. Now these are quite interesting, these brakes, and I'm going to show you why. As soon as I get this stupid cap on, like that, I can illustrate it to you. So I'm just going to move that to the side. And I want to talk a little bit about, about how these work. Okay, so let's have a look at how this works. The hydraulic side of it works just like a normal piston. We've got a seal around the outside. We've also got one on the shaft here. All this area here is um, flooded with brake fluid. There are three balls. It works exactly the same way as a motorcycle clutch or the clutch on a lot of motorcycles where you have three balls that sit in a cavity in the back of here and a ramp effect there on the back of the handbrake lever. Now what that does, if I can find the right trajectory for it, is it sits a bit like that. And when you pull the handbrake on, that twists and unseats the balls and sends them up the ramp on this part here. Now what that does, that's got nowhere to go here because it's held in a bolted in housing. So it pushes the piston in as it rotates. Okay. Now to allow for pad wear, I'm just going to pull those out before I lose them. To allow for pad wear, there's a bearing in here, don't forget. So the pad, the piston can actually rest in any of those areas here where the seal allows it to, or where the pads allow it to go, and yet still have the right um, gap, if you like, here for that ramp effect uh, mechanism to work. Now there's also Torrington bearings and Bellevue washers and all sorts of things that go in here and on here and that sort of thing. But basically, it maintains the right distance by this screw then of course it can work by operating the handbrake lever um, and basically that's all it is. So we just need to be careful of a few things with this and that is that we phase everything the right way because if we don't, it won't work. And we've got to be really super careful about that seal there. It's a lot harder to get that right than it is the ones in the caliper housing. So I think for now what we'll do, we'll pull that out and we'll put these parts to the side and we can then go ahead and start fitting everything. I'm going to change my gloves because they're pretty foul and I think we'll make a start now. If you do put fresh gloves on and they're the cheap Coles ones like I use, just wipe them on your shirt to get the excess talcum powder off. Uh, now let's have a look at our kit. Let's have a look at the kit. Alright, so what have we got? We've got the square cut seal for the piston itself. We've got the one that goes on the handbrake shaft. We've got a dust seal which is a bit misshapen. We've got the handbrake housing gasket, handbrake housing seal, and a nipple sleeve cover, whatever you want to call it. So for now, we're just looking at the regular two, which is the square cut seal. Now, I pre-lubricated this after I cleaned everything up. We're using PBR rubber grease. A lot of people say brake fluid. I don't like using it. It's just not as free. So I'm going to rub that around the inside. This is purpose-made castor oil-based rubber grease. It's not the normal rubber grease you'd buy in a can. It's purposely created for this sort of thing. Now, this is going to be difficult to see. I've got my square cut seal. I've got a little bit of rubber grease and I'm going to go around it. We don't want to twist this. It's very easy to wreck it, so we don't want to. I'm going to index that with my forefinger. I'm trying to make this visible, maybe it's not for you. Maybe if I put it further in like that, it might be. So that's sitting in there. I really hope you can see this. And I am just gonna pop it into its groove and then make absolutely sure it's straight and it's not twisted at all. So we want it like that all the way around. And then we can be happy. Now. I'm going to give a spot more, just a little bit. We don't need to go carried away, get carried away with this. This has been, I've had that tube for 25 years, I think. That's why it's so illegible. And I'm going to put this boot dust seal over the piston and then pull it down, if you know what I mean. So again, we're using more and more of this crap. And the seal goes like that. Just like that. And I'm going to pull it down. So the bottom skirt of it is hanging below the piston and it'll start to sort of retract inward. And that makes it really, really easy to stick it and locate it in there. And I need to get on a chair. Oh, get something soft. 
I need to get on a chair down to its level so I can see what I'm doing. It's This is going to be difficult for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to pull that up. Go in here. It's probably impossible for you to see. I'll see how this goes and if it doesn't work in that it's not visible. I'll um, just refilm it from the side. That's how I've done it in the past. So I'm just working the seal down into that first groove and it'll just pop in like that. I think I've got it now. No, I haven't quite got it. You feel it, it just goes bang straight in. Just like that. I think we're good now. now it's important, the piston's not in yet, but that bottom seal, that top dust seal is, and you can see around there, I can see the chamfer on the housing. And we need to be able to make sure that's right. That way we know that dust seal's in the right spot. Now to get this in, you need to get it dead square. And you'll feel it rest against the seal. Now, this needs to be put in by hand, right? You just need to squeeze it gently, and you need to feel it go in. Like that. That's how you do it. Don't use a clamp. I don't care what anyone says. Don't use multi-grips. Don't use anything. Use your hands. You need to be able to feel it. And if you can't feel it, you don't know what it's doing. Right, so I'm going to pop the camera back up there, and then we'll continue. Right, so I've got to put a handbrake drive in, if you like. We've got three Belleville washers, and they're all cut in a different way. So what we want to do, like symbols, think of the symbols of the monkey. They have to be like that. So it's kind of a UFO shape, and that will go on top. And that's what you're looking for, that sort of thing there. Now, hello, aeroplane. We've got to get this guy on. Now, that can be a challenge. So for that, I'm going to use masking or, sorry, sticky tape. And I'm just going to get my scissors. Right, so I'm going to use some tape on here. And I want that tape almost at that groove. So I'm going to go quite tightly around here. Like that. And this hasn't got any lubricant on it yet. Um, like that and then of course we can wrap it around here like that now I'm just going to pop some gloves on we've wiped all the powder off now this is a square cut seal it appears to be the same thickness as it does depth uh, it's important to know that on the off chance it does roll we don't want it to but it might so we're going to get a bit of our rubbery grease and we're going to lubricate the tape and the seal and we're going to stick the seal over here. Now what this tape's doing is doing two things. One, it's going to stop the seal being cut over the serrations. We don't want to roll it, we're just going to work it up here. And I'm going to work it up with my fingernail up onto that ledge. And it is rolling, which is a pain in the ass, and in she goes. And that doesn't quite look right. Oh, yes, it is. That's fine. All right, that's good. That's cool. All right, so I just want to also lubricate in there, that contact area. And then we can take our tape off if we can find the end of it. As we said, this is all going to be lubricated with brake fluid. Right, so what we're doing is we're looking down the back here now. On the back, there is a chamfer in the housing. And we need to watch that thing like a hawk to make absolutely sure that seal isn't going to roll. And the best way to do that is to grab a torch, flashlight, and watch the thing as you wind it in. Now you probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to just wind in bit by bit. and just keep a close eye just to make sure it's not doing what I don't want it to do. And that all looks fairly kosher. Generally if things go belly up you can feel it. And it's really important to be really careful. Because if this leaks, the brake wheel is going to fly at the back. Right, so I'm just going to wind it around. It's getting stiff. Probably not advisable to do it this way. So that that peg there is in line between, equal distance between these two. 
And you'll probably find in turning this in, it may well push the piston out a bit. I think that's about right. Which it hasn't much, maybe just a little bit, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Right, so let's have a look and take stock. It's important this thing stays indexed. That's going to marry up with a peg that sits in there, so that can't rotate. The handbrake mechanism is what's going to rotate to push that in. And, uh, and that's what those Belleville washers will do. That's all the room it needs to operate the handbrake. So I think now we'll ditch that for the moment. And we'll have a look at this guy. And we've got to clean out in there a little bit more. And then we can put it together. Okay, so we've got our seal in. And there's a few parts that need to go in. The handbrake actuator. There's some balls. There's a Torrington bearing. And another flat washer. So everything forward of here, or back from here, uh, doesn't have brake fluid in it. And so I'm going to lubricate these little ball pockets. And I'm going to lubricate that bit there, just to hold these pegs in and balls in. So one ball goes there. Our locator is just going to drop one. I just dropped it. Where'd it go? Come back. The peg goes there. We've got a ball in here and a ball in there. Right. We never put seals in dry, so we're just going to whack a bit of grease in there, in the seal. And I'm also going to lubricate the seal surface and where the bearing, the Torrington bearing runs, which is in there. There's also a washer that goes there as well. Kind of like a thrust washer. And that will sit like that. And then we can just pop him in. And I like to rotate seals in like that. Right, so there we go. Now, let me clean this seal surface up and get our hardware ready, which is here. We're looking for four grade five high tensiles to hold that housing in. And gasket goes in dry. We'll stick that there. We've oriented this so that where the peg is, the two ball pockets are facing the top like that and we lower the bugger on and you'll feel it you'll feel when it's right move that gasket around and I'm just going to start these these has got a fair bit of duress on them these things but um, these are plated and quite often plating will take strength out but it's important to remember when you get parts hydro, not hydro blasted, I was talking about that. When you get the parts plated, you ask for them to be heated afterwards, and that will take out any hydrogen embrittlement. Now, I'm just going to get a spanner on the off chance that orientation is not quite right, and it feels really good. So I'm just going to nip these up with the right size spanner, and then we'll torque them down. And then we'll test it to make sure that we're right. Because we could be wrong. I don't think we are, but we could be. Because it is me doing it after all. Well, let's have a look. There's a handbrake there. It hasn't been tracted, but it can be pushed back. So that's cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll talk these down. Stuff. Okay, so that all looks pretty good. Cool. Ah, spring. There's an index for the spring here. And that goes like that. And then we put our lever on. The lever goes opposite the nipple. 
so the lever has to go around here so I've got to pull the spring around now it's sometimes easier when you can find your bloody hardware bag what have I done with it what have I done with it right these can be quite difficult to get on so I'm just gonna I might have to fight it so I'm just gonna start that in there it's a 5 16th ply I'm gonna pull this around Radio. so we're still fighting this guy here I've got the spring in but we're just going to move this around a little bit. It's probably easier to do it on a vice, come to think of it. There we go. There we go. Let me tighten him up. Yep. All good. Right. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the slipperies, the sides. We've got to put this on. Now, this obviously carries the pads. So that is going to go like that. The pads are held in here, they're held in there. Now we can put one slide on without the other for now. And we've cleaned them up. And they're rather slippery. But that's cool, we like slippery. The inner slide, there's an inner slide and an outer slide. These must be this way. So, there's a split pin that locks in there. This part here pokes out the front. So that back bit is flush, that forward bit pokes out the front. So I'm going to put those in. There we go. So we just lubricate those slides and put that in. We can put this one in now. This is going too long so I'm going to maybe speed it up a little bit. I think we pop that there and we just squeeze it over. That's one. Now this one here is a pain in the ass. This one, I've got to think about. I can't remember how I did it last time. It's so going to start here. Off to the left. My left and I'm just going to grab the bastard and stick it in. Nearly, I nearly had it. These can be horrendous. Let's go again. This is fun. The trouble is I'm scratching the springs. There we go. Beautiful. Right, scratch the springs, but what do you do, hey? The These are tricky. Look at this. This is typical. Typical Ford XC. It's metric, not imperial. So we'll stick that there, and there we go. Rather lovely. Uh, if you want to, you can probably get a needle nose plier just to make sure that piston's turned oh, we'll turn all the way down. There's a special tool that goes in here. If you can just remember which way it goes. Yes, it goes like that. And we're all the way home. Beautiful. I am a happy boy. Right, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little exercise in rebuilding some calipers. I know I did the front ones before, but the rear ones are a little bit different with that whole handbrake mechanism there. The only parts left in the parts bin, of course, these mounting bolts, which are grade 8. They're quite strong. And these two sets of nuts. And there to secure. That's the old brake line. I don't want to get too much muck on this. They secure the brake line to the backing plate. And of course, we don't use banjos in these. They use a conventional um, hose, if you like, with a, a ferrule and a thread on the end of it, which we'll put a copper washer in there. So I'm just going to throw that on the ground. Uh, so we need a uh, new set of those. And we can mount all this stuff in the car with some new pads. So on that note, I'll say thanks very much for watching. Enjoy Classic, and I'll see you soon.